What's up everybody? Thanks for joining us here today on the VSO Gun Channel. As you guys can see, we are here in the vault room here today. I just got back from the Iraq Veteran 8888 Range Day 2018. And man, I tell you what, that is like my favorite event of the year. I would not miss it for the world uh, because it is like one of those events that is just like complete chaos for two days. And I'm not trying to detract from the, the efforts of Eric and his team down there. They do an excellent job keeping it safe and making it a fun time. But it's like machine guns for two days. I mean, it is awesome. Like, my camera almost never auto-attenuates uh, these days because I do I have it set up for like a lot of silencer work and stuff like that It just doesn't do that um, The entire time I had the camera on the the microphone was like nope not doing it So I figured while it was fresh in my mind, I would just do a recap video of some of the things that I thought were cool uh, You'll see a lot of them roll across the screen. I'll annotate what they are uh, but uh, <laughs> some things that I thought were definitely worth mentioning were the new C product stuff. They're doing a lot of cool stuff with their mags. I, I'm a huge metal mag fanboy, so <laughs> so that it's good to see that whole like GI mag thing come to the modern age, so to speak. Uh, they're doing good work there. Uh, the new Zero Delta pistols, it's like the adult erector set of the... Uh, of the pistol world. At first I thought they were just another Glock, but it turns out they aren't a, a Glock at all. It uses Glock magazines and that's about it. Um, <laughs> which is which is cool to see them them working on that sort of thing. We don't really have a modular pistol. Uh, the Glock is about as close to the modular pistol as we can get and they've completely taken it to the next level on that sort of thing. So that was neat to see. I also liked the tactical tuna shotgun is what I'm gonna call it from TriStar. It's basically a 12 gauge AK that has been bullpupified into this polymer stock thing. <laughs> and it's a, it's a really fun time to shoot. I did get to get some trigger time on the HM Defense stuff. Uh, we'll have a dedicated video coming out on their monoblock barrels here very, very shortly. Uh, hopefully next week, so definitely be uh, looking out for that. Uh, I got to shoot a lot of cans while I was down there during the dedicated suppress times and uh, one of the things that I really had a good time shooting was uh, Joe from Aklis brought down a couple of cans. One of them was on on the front of an AK-105 uh, and I could basically push the thing off of my shoulder and fire it full auto uh, <laughs> because the can was soaking up so much of the recoil. It was pretty impressive and of course they're redesigned pylons there as well but I also got to see some some stuff from CGS Group and uh, and and Rugged. There was another can manufacturer there, but their name is escaping my mind uh, right this second. I apologize, uh, but uh, they were doing dedicated cans for things like 65 Creedmoor and 338 Lapua, and I got to shoot their cans during a suppressed only time, which uh, I got to really see the capabilities of the can, see what kind of sound signature they could soak up because those rounds are both exceptionally loud and uh, also mitigation of recoil and things like that. So I was fairly impressed on my initial impressions, but now that my SOT is complete, I hope to uh, work a little bit more with some of those smaller silencer manufacturers. So if you are a small can manufacturer, hit me up, send me an email, uh, call me. And if you guys know of somebody that's not uh, very well known, definitely let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, I, I will see if I can run them down. Now let's get to some of the juicy stuff that occurred at the shoot. Uh, that's what we all want to know. Uh, there was a competition between the Warrior Poet Society, Such, and Mr. Guns and Gear. Uh, and I got a picture of Such uh, really concentrating on that sewing. It was quite funny. I didn't stick around for the whole thing. I'm sure that they will argue about who was uh, who won that thing. Uh, but it, it was cool to see something like that. Um, we had one fire that I know of. Well, technically two fires in one location. <laughs> and I know that because I uh, I was shooting and they called ceasefire and I like ditched my rifle and took off running down the range because it was really, really dry and I, there's a woods right behind the berm and I didn't want to be, <laughs> the worst case scenario would be if a shoot like that caused like a major forest fire on the Eastern seaboard, right? That would be the worst press ever. So that's what's going through my mind. I was like, let's do it right now. Well, I turned around behind me and I saw Tyson from CMMG had a uh, had a cooler of water, and I just did one of those quick reach around or reach around. Just smother it with this tall dry grass. Turnarounds, 
and I saw him like running right at me with this cooler of water and I thought he was coming for me. So like fight or flight like kicked in and I just like turned on the motors and uh, <laughs> consequently by the time we got down there there wasn't a whole lot of water left in the cooler but uh, somehow uh, along the way I ended up with the fire hose which didn't make a whole lot of sense because Adam from the NFA review channel was there and he's a real fireman. Uh, he had like the fire extinguisher and he was like putting it out and stuff like that. Uh, and then they're like, spray the berm with the water. And I was like, there's a human being in the middle of the fire still like, and I like him. I'm not just going to spray him with a fire hose. I'm, he may not have cared, but you know, I wasn't just going to spray him. I mean, and, and the thing had some recoil too. When I turned it on it, it probably wouldn't have felt good to get sprayed with. Uh, I'm not sure if he would have cared or not, but I was just not going to do that. So eventually uh, I did try to spray around him, you know, but it was kind of like shooting, you know, hostage swingers with a 12 gauge. Like it just, <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't working really well. Uh, but the title of the video, how I got yelled at at the shoot. So I was up at the line shooting a rifle and uh, the manufacturer came up around the time I completed uh, shooting that rifle and handed me one of their AR9s to try out. And right when that happened, somebody else stepped up right next to me and started shooting a rather loud rifle uh, of relatively high caliber. So I just kind of like took the gun and I, you know, went gun up and stepped kind of like out of the brass stream and let it kind of go by. And once he finished, he kind of turned left and walked away. And I just kind of went like this, right? And I started shooting. Well, I had displaced myself back, you know, a step or a step and a half or something like that. And the RSO uh, allowed me to finish my mag. He didn't interrupt me or anything like that. But he comes up to me and he's like, hey man, you need to scoot forward. Look how short that barrel is. Somebody could walk in front of you. And I was like, even though it was relatively sparsely populated and the, you know, the probability of that happening is probably fairly low, I was like, you know what? You're right, you could. And the reason I bring that up is I think uh, there's a moral of the story here. Uh, when we talk about the four rules of firearm safety, they apply everywhere. The fourth rule of firearm safety, uh, third, depending on who you're arguing with, is know your target and the ballistic implications of engaging that target. Uh, this is often presented in the form of know your target, it's foreground and background. Uh, but I like that translation a little bit more because it, it digs a little bit deeper. It's not just what you are doing, but it's all the stupidity that's going on around you as well. And this works really good for events like this because there's so many people. In a vacuum, this doesn't sound like a big deal, but let's look at the specific situation. Uh, we have a bunch of people out there of varying experience levels, everybody from the super expert all the way down to the new Instagram superstar that just shot his first machine gun ever of his life and has a need to post that video to the interwebs via his computer phone as quickly as he can. He may not be paying full attention to what's going on while he's walking uh, along the firing line, something like that. When you start thinking about that sp specific situation, the potential for uh, an accident like that to occur um, becomes not all that unrealistic. Like I said, I didn't argue with the RSO at all. Uh, the dude's got a job to do and he did a really good job of doing it because uh, everybody left with the same number of holes that they came with. So I'm going to say whatever methods he used the entire weekend to accomplish that were success. The ends justify the means, if you will. Now, what I would say to the, to the man, uh, I didn't get his name or anything like that, is uh, thank you. And, uh, sir, you are doing the job that nobody wanted to do while everybody else was having a good time. Uh, you are the hero that we need, but not the one that we deserve.